자, 둘 시간에 영어 먼저 이렇게 출장 와서 지금 숙소에서 읽도록 하겠습니다. 자, 미래의 나를 위한 투자 아깝지 않습니다. 힘들지 않습니다. Chapter 14, 아, Chapter 15, The Catcher in the Rye. I didn't sleep too long because I think it was only around 10 o'clock when I woke up. I felt pretty hungry as soon as I had a cigarette. The last time I'd eaten was those two hamburgers I had with Brossard and Ackley when we went into Ager's town to the movies. That was a long time ago. It seemed like uh, 50 years ago. The phone was right next to me and I started to call down and have them send off for some breakfast. But I was sort of afraid that they might send it up with old Maurice. If you think I was dying to see him again, you are crazy. Oh, you're crazy. So I just laid around in bed for a while and smoked another cigarette. I thought of giving old Jane a buzz to see if she was home yet, if she was home yet and all. But I wasn't in the mood. What I did do, I gave old Sally Hayes a buzz. She went to marry a wood woodruff, and I knew she was home because I'd had this letter from her a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't too crazy about her, but I'd known I'd known her for years. I used to think she was quite intelligent in my stupidity. The reason I did was because she knew quite a lot about the theater and the plays and the literature and, and, all, and all that stuff. If somebody knows quite a lot about those things, it takes you quite a while to find out whether they are really stupid or not. It took me years to find it out in old Sally's case. I think I'd have found it out a... Uh, uh, I'd have found it out a, uh, uh, I'd have found it out a lot sooner if we hadn't enacted so damn much. My big trouble is, I always sort of think whoever I'm necking is a pretty intelligent person. It hasn't a god, it it hasn't got a goddamn thing to do with it. But I keep thinking it all anyway. Anyway, I gave her a buzz. First the maid answered, then her father, then she got a Sally, I said. Yes, who is this? She said she was quite a little phony. I'd already told her father who it was. Hold on, Caulfield, how are ya? Hold on, I'm fine, how are ya? Swell, listen, how are ya anyway? I mean, how's school? Fine, she said. I mean, you know, swell, well, listen, I was wondering if you were busy today. It's a Sunday, but there's always one or two martinis going on Sunday. Benefits and that stuff, would you care to go? I'd love to grand. Grand, if there's one word I hate, it's grand. It's just so funny, for a second. I was tempted to tell her to forget about the martini, but we chewed the fat for a while. That is, she chewed it. You couldn't get a word in edgewise. First, she told me about some Harvard guy. It probably was a freshman, but she didn't say naturally. That was rushing hell out of her. That was rushing hell out of her. Calling her up night and day. Night and day, they killed me. Then she told me about some other guy, some West Point cadet, that was cutting his throat over her too. Big deal. I told her to meet me under the clock at the Biltmore at 12 of 2 o'clock, not to be late. Because the show probably started at 2.30, she was always late. Then I hung up. She gave me a pain in the ass, but she was very good looking. After I made the date with old Sally, I got out of bed and got dressed and packed my bag. 
I took a look out the window before I left the room, though, to see how all the perverts were doing. But they all had their shades down. They were the height. They were the height of mo、uh, modesty in the morning. Modesty in the morning. Then I went down in the elevator and checked out. I didn't see old Morris around anywhere. I didn't break my neck looking for him. Naturally, the bastard. I got a cab outside the hotel, but I didn't have the faintest damn idea where I was going. I had no place to go. It was only Sunday, and I couldn't go home till Wednesday or Tuesday, the soonest. And I certainly didn't feel like going to another hotel and getting my brains beat out. So what I did, I told the driver to take me to Grand Central Station. It was right near the Biltmore, where I was meeting Sally later, and I figured what I'd I'd do. I'd check my bags in one of those strong boxes that they give you a key to, then get some breakfast. I was sort of hungry. While I was in the cab, I took out my wallet and sort of counted my money. I don't remember exactly what I had left, but it was no fortune or anything. I spent a king's ransom in about two lousy weeks. I really had. I'm a goddamn、uh, spend this rift at her heart. What I don't spend, I lose. Half the time, I sort of even、uh, even forget to pick up my change at restaurants and nightclubs and all. It drives my parents crazy. You can't blame them. My father's quite wealthy though. I don't know how much he makes. He's never discussed that stuff with me, but I imagine quite a lot. He's a corporation lawyer. Those boys really haul it 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 in. Another reason I know he's quite well off. He's always investing money in shows on Broadway. They always flop though, and it drives my mother crazy when he does it. She hasn't felt too healthy since my brother Ellie died. She's very nervous. That's another reason why I hated like hell for her to know I got the X again. After I put my put my bags in one of those strong boxes at the station, I went into this little sandwich bar and bad, bad breakfast. I had quite a large breakfast for me: orange juice, bacon and eggs, a toast and coffee. Usually, I just drink some orange juice. I'm a very light eater. I really am. That's why I'm so damn skinny. I was supposed to be.、Uh, I was supposed to be on this diet where you eat a lot of、uh, starches and crap to gain weight on and all. But I didn't ever do it. When I'm out with somewhere, I generally just eat a Swiss cheese sandwich and a melted milk. It isn't much, but you get quite a lot of vitamins in the melted milk. H. V. Caulfield, Holden Vitamin Caulfield. While I was eating my eggs, these two nuns with suitcases and all. I guess that they were moving to another convert、uh, or something. And were waiting for a train. Came in and sat down next to me at the counter. At the counter, they didn't seem to know what the hell to do with their suitcase cases. So I gave them a hand. They were these very inexpensive-looking suitcases, the ones that aren't genuine, genuine leather, or anything. Genuine leather or anything. It isn't important, I know, but I hate it when somebody has cheap suitcases. It sounds terrible to say it, but I can't even get to hate somebody just looking at them if they have cheap suitcases with them. Something happened once. Something happened once. For a while, when I was at Elton Hills, I roomed with this boy, Dick Slagle. That had these very inexpensive suitcases. He used to keep them under the bed instead of on the rack, 
so that nobody to see see them standing next to mine. It depressed the holy hell out of me, and I kept wanting to throw mine out. I kept wanting to throw mine out or something, or even trade with them. Mine came from Mark Cross, and they were gen genuine cowhide and all that crap. And I guess they cost quite a pretty penny. Genuine, genuine, genuine. But it was a funny thing. Here's, here's, here's what happened. What I did, I finally put my suitcases under my bed instead of on the rack. So that all the slave girl wouldn't get a goddamn inferiority complex about it. But here's what he did. The day after I put mine under my bed, he took them out and put them back on the rack. The reason he did it, it took me a while to find out, was because he wanted people to think my bags were his. He really did. He was, he was a very funny guy that way. He was always saying snotty things about them like suitcases. For instance, he kept saying they, they were too new and bourgeous. That was his favorite goddamn word. He read it uh, somewhere or heard it somewhere. Everything I had was bourgeous as hell. Even my fountain, fountain, fun, fountain pen was bourgeous. He borrowed it off me all the time, but it was gorgeous anyway. We only roomed together about two months. Then we both asked to be moved, and the funny thing was, I sort of missed him after he we moved, because he had a hell of a good sense of humor, and we had a lot of fun sometimes. I wouldn't be surprised if he missed me too. At first, he only used to be uh, kidding when he called my stub a burgess and i didn't give a damn it was sort of a funny in fact it was sort of a funny in fact then after a while you could tell he wasn't kidding anymore the thing is it's really hard to be roommates with people if your suitcase if your suit, suitcases are much better than theirs if yours are really good ones and theirs aren't you think if they are intelligent and all, the other person, and they have a good sense of humor, that they don't give a damn whose suitcases are better, but they do. They really do. It's one of the one of the reasons why I roomed with a stupid bastard like a Stradlator. At least his suitcases were as good as mine. Anyway, these two nuns were sitting next to me. And we sort of struck up a conversation. The one right next to me had one of those straw baskets that you see nuns and the Salvation Army babies call collecting dough with around Christmas time. You see them standing on corners, especially on Fifth Avenue, in front of the big department stores and all. Anyway, the one next to me dropped hers on the floor and I reached it down and picked it up for her. I asked her if she was out collecting money for charity and all. She said no. She said she couldn't get it in her suitcase when she was packing it and she was just carrying it. Carrying it. She had a pretty nice smile when she, when she looked at you. When she looked at you. She had a big nose and she had on those glasses with a sort of iron rims that aren't too attractive but she had a hell of a kind of face. I thought if you were taking up a collection, I told her, I could make a small contribution. You could keep the money for when you, when you do take up a collection. Oh how very kind of you, she said and the other, the other one, her friend. Uh, looked over at me. The other one was reading a little black book while she drank her coffee. Coffee. It looked like a Bible, but it was too skinny. It was a Bible type book, though. All the two of them were eating for breakfast was a toast and coffee. That depressed me. I hate it. 
Uh, if I'm eating bacon and eggs or something and somebody else is only eating toast and coffee, they let me give them 10 bucks as a contribution. Contribu contribution. They kept asking me if I was sure I could afford it and all. I told them I had quite a bit of money with me, but they didn't seem to believe me. They took it though, finally. The both of them kept thanking me so much it was embarrassing. I swung the converse conversation around to general topics and asked them where they were going. They said they were school teachers and that they had just come from Chicago and that they were going to start teaching at some conv 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 convent on 168th Street or 186th Street at one of those streets way the hell up town. The one next to me with the iron glasses said she taught English and her friend taught history and American government. Then I started wondering like a bastard what the one sitting next to me that taught English Thought, thought, thought about be, uh, being a nun and all when she read certain books for English. Books not necessarily with a lot of sexy stuff in them, but books with the lovers and all in them. Take old Estasia uh, V in The Return of the Na Native by Thomas Hardy. She wasn't too sexy or anything, but even so, you can't help wondering what a nun maybe think about when she re reads about old Estasia. I didn't say anything though, naturally. All I said was English was my best subject. Oh really? Oh, I'm so glad. The one with the glasses that taught English said, what have you read this year? What have you read this year? I'd be very interested to know. She was really nice. Well, most of the time we were on the Anglo Saxons, Beowulf, and Old Grandil, and Lord Randall, my son, and all those things. But we had to read, we had to read outside the books for extra credit once in a while. I read, the I read The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy and Romeo and Juliet and Ju Julius. Oh, Romeo and Juliet? Lovely. Didn't you just love it? She certainly didn't sound much like a nun. Yes, I did. I liked it a lot, a lot. There was a few things I didn't like about it, but it was quite moving. On the whole, what didn't you like about it? Can't you remember? To tell you the truth, it was sort of embarrassing in a way to be talking about Romeo and Juliet with her. I mean, they play, they play gets pretty sexy in some parts, and she was a nun and all. But she asked me, so I discussed it with uh, with her for a while. Well, I'm not too crazy about Romeo and Juliet. I said. I mean, I like them, but I don't know. They get pretty annoying sometimes. I mean, it felt much sorrier than old. Mercutio, Mercutio got killed then when Romeo and Juliet did. The thing is, I never liked Romeo too much after Mercutio, Mercutio gets stabbed, stabbed, stabbed by that other man, Julius' cousin. What's his name? Tybalt. That's right, Tybalt. I said, I always forget the guy's name. It was Romeo's fault. I mean, I liked him the best in the play, old Mercurio, Mercurio. I don't know. All those Montagues and the Capulets, they are all right. Especially Juliet, but Mercurio, he was, it's hard to explain. He was very smart and entertaining and all. The thing is, it drives me crazy if somebody gets killed. Especially somebody very smart and entertaining and all. And it's somebody else's fault. Romeo and Juliet, at least it was their own fault. What school do you go to? She asked me. She probably wanted to get off the subject of Romeo and Juliet. 
I told her Pansy, and she'd hold of it. She said it was a very good school. I let it pass though. Then the other one, the one that taught history and government, said they'd better be learning along. I took their check off them, but they wouldn't let me pay it. The one with the glasses made me give it back to her. You've been more than generous, she said. You are very sweet boy. She certainly was nice. She reminded me a little bit of old Ernest Morrow's mother, the one I met on the train. When she smiled mostly, we've enjoyed talking to you so much, she said. I said I'd enjoyed talking to them a lot too. I mean it too. I'd have enjoyed it even more though. I think if I hadn't been sort of afraid the whole time I was talking to them, they data all of a sudden tried to find out if I was a Catholic. Catholics are always trying to find out if you're a Catholic. It happens to me a lot, I know. I know, partly because my last name is Irish and most of the people of Irish descent are Catholics. As a matter of fact, my father was a Catholic once. He quit though when he married my mother. But Catholics are always trying to find out if you are a Catholic, even if they don't know your last name. I knew this one Catholic boy, Louis Shenny, when I was at the Wooden School. He was the first boy I ever met there. He and I were sitting in the first two chairs outside the goddamn infir infirmary. The day at school opened, waiting for our physicals and we sort of struck up this conversation about tennis. He was quite interested in tennis and so was, uh, so was I. He told me he went to the National uh, Forest Hills every summer and I told him I did too. And then we talked about certain hot shot tennis players for quite a while. He knew quite a lot about tennis for a kid his age. He really did. Then after a while, right in the middle of the goddamn conversation, he asked me, did you happen, did you happen to notice where the Catholic Church is in town by any chance? The thing was, you could tell by the way he asked me that he was trying to find out if I was a Catholic. He really was. Not that he was a prejudiced or anything, but he just wanted to know. He was enjoying the conversation about tennis and all, but you could tell he would have enjoyed it more if I was a Catholic and all. The kind of stuff drives, drives me crazy. I'm not saying it ruined our conversation or anything. It didn't. But it, it sure as hell didn't do it any good. That's why I was glad those two nuns didn't ask me if I was a Catholic. It, would have, it wouldn't have spoiled the conversation if they had, but it, it would have been different, probably. I'm not saying I blame Catholics. I don't. I'd be the same way, probably, if I was a Catholic. It's just like those suitcases I telling you about it in a way. All I'm saying is that it's no good for a nice conversation. That's all I'm saying. When they got up to go, the two nuns, I did something very stupid and embarrassing. I was smoking a cigarette. And when I stood up to say goodbye to them, by mistake, I blew some smoke in their face. I didn't mean to, but I did it. I apologized like a madman. And they were very polite and nice about it. But it was very embarrassing anyway. After they left, I started getting sorry that I'd only given them 10 bucks for their collection. But the thing was, I'd made that date to go to a matini with the old Sally Hayers, and I needed to keep some dough for the tickets and the stuff. I was sorry anyway though. Got that money. It always ends up making you blue as hell. Hmm. 어 그냥 바로 읽으니까 쉽지는 않은데 음, 점점 점점 이렇게 빠져드는 것 같은 느낌? 음, 재밌네요. 음 오케이 계속해서 읽어 나가겠습니다. 짜투리 시간에.